Hello and welcome to turn 11, uh, August the 69th. It's the second turn of the Caucasus campaign scenario of GMT's uh, Stalingrad 42 um, by Mark Simonich. Uh, uh, thanks for following me so far. Um, I hope the uh, new graphics, etc., um, uh, is uh, to everybody's liking. Um, let me know in. Uh, in the comments if uh, if they're a problem um, right uh, so a couple of things to cover before we start um, a couple of things that were pointed out to a mate of mine Chris um, in the comments on the last video um, what to do with the retreat so uh, with retreat I kind of flippantly said that the um, uh, we'd surrounded uh, the uh, a, a Russian unit with Zox and that was going to be fatal. Uh, that's not actually true. Um, Zox, uh, Zox bonds are are fatal, um, and also two consecutive Zox hexes are fatal to a unit, um, but not just Zox a, a single Zox on its own. So just clarifying um, that. Um, the other thing was. Um, The other thing was uh, the advance of the combat. So um, I said that you had to go through um, the defender's vacated hex. That's not actually true. You can go in any direction. However, if you're forming a breakthrough group, that is a group of units that you want to attack again, um, then if you don't go through the um, the uh, def defending units a vacated hex, then you lose a point. It costs you a point of advance to go in another direction. But if you're just advancing, you can go in any direction. So I may have been uh, able to do a slightly better with um, the uh, the Germans last turn. But let's not worry. We'll we'll just crack on. So that's the first couple of things. So let's crack on with um, uh, the initial phase for uh, <coughs> for the Germans. So, so looking at our uh, initial phase here, um, we've got uh, ready air units. Uh, so the used Stuka unit here, uh, or uh, air unit here, um, is now available for the Germans. I I'll keep it on there just to be, uh, uh, you know, just be somewhere to put it um, to be used in the turn. Uh, the next thing is to place reinforcements. So reinforcements, um, if we just raise camera a bit uh, there we go uh, the reinforcements are here so um, just looking at we have our first I believe Romanian units um, here two cavalry and a mountain unit um, we have two of these artillery support units um, but they come on uh, used so they need to be supplied and finally we have a German mountain unit as well uh, so they can be brought on on the top edge of the map um, pretty much like uh, the previous units were last turn although I believe the um, the actual range of hexes that can be can be used is um, is, is expanded um, but anyway those are the reinforcements for the turn uh, and then next we have our use replacements. So the replacements are up here uh, and uh, it's difficult to see but there's a Russian replacement and a German replacement. The German replacement is an infantry. Now we don't, I believe, have any infantry class units which are flipped over. Uh, in which case we basically forego that uh, unit. Oh no, actually we do. Um, if I excuse the movement if we scroll over to here we do have our Slovak however it's not German so I don't believe that German um, replacement can be uh, used yes because there are reinforcement replacements for Axis units as opposed to German units and that's not uh, that's not a German unit it's actually an Axis unit so so nothing going there either uh, so I think we need to forego that replacement, I'm afraid. You don't get to store them, unfortunately. You get them, you use them, or you lose them, as the uh, as the saying goes. 
Um, right, so beyond that, if we switch back again, uh, we have, there we go, uh, we have our uh, resource point usage. So the Germans get a resource point per turn starting this turn. And as I went through before, there are several uses that can this can uh, this can go to. Generally, what we use it for is for a supply point. The other um, uses are to construct a fortification, like we used the uh, Soviet one last turn for. Um, we can immediately flip over an artillery support unit if it's on a rail line. Um, we don't have those are just coming on this turn anyway, and the rail, rails are still Russian, uh, a Russian gauge, I'm afraid. Um, or we can do what's known as a planned offensive marker on an HQ. We don't actually have any HQs here, so that's useless anyway. So really, all we can do is to place a supply point in a friendly entry area. So that supply point will be one of these. Uh, and then those can barrel along with the artillery support units to flip them back. That's that's really what they're they're useful for. So we add that effectively to the reinforcements to come on. So we've used our resource point, and then there's uh, a line about flipping HQs with RPs or SPs. Um, so that's our our, our our ASUs, but again we don't do that yet. So we're really on to the movement phase. Right, so uh, looking at that uh, movement, uh, uh, so we're pushing in this centre point here to try and get to Krasnodar. Um, attacks here and here, we've got uh, across the uh, uh, the river here uh, for the attack, which is fine. Uh, we do have to cross the river here, uh, so the defender is doubled, but um, uh, we should be able to uh, manage that and break that river line. Uh, and probably get round the back of Kropotkin here uh, and finally we've got some uh, little combat over here as well to push back that cavalry um, up here I've uh, decided to send one of those remaining cavalry on a bit of an end run down here and see if it can disrupt uh, the withdrawal of the Russians on uh, this side uh, now um, I think remember uh, at, the, at the start I said there's a, a critical um, splitting of uh, the German effort into the two way, the east and the west way. Um, so uh, that's going to come up fairly soon where we need to uh, decide what units are going in what direction. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this is kind of the start of it here. And up here is the start of the east. And we'll be diverting units um, across as, as well. So, um, right, so. Uh, I'll just sort out what uh, what the combat adds, uh, odds are. Oh, 
Okay, so there's our four attacks lined up. Um, but we have a 26 to 4 here, which is a 6 to 1. Um, because the tanks are over the minor river, they don't get their tank shift bonus here. Um, here we have a 12 to 3, 4 to 1 again. We do get the tank shift for the Stug Battalion here. Here again, because we're across the river, we don't get the tank bonuses, but we do have um, it's 30 to 6. So that's a 0. Um, shoot me. Um, 30 to 6, so that's a 5 to 1 there. And uh, lastly, we have a 9 to 2, so 4 to 1 here. So um, I haven't placed the um, air unit yet for support. And um, as this is a 5 to 1, I think we'll make this one the 6 to 1. So we'll put the air unit here. Um, so I think uh, in order of preference, I think what we might do is, I think go for the centre first. I think go for this one first. So that's 4 to 1, 1 shift of 5 to 1. Uh, and let's, uh, let's roll the dice on that. Uh, Uh, so that's a five, uh, a five on uh, five to one. Five on five to one is in the red, so no, no uh, uh, des uh, determined defence allowed. A uh, five is a DS, so shattered, so that unit is uh, removed. And there's an advance of four. So, of course, the infantry can't advance four. The Stug Battalion could. Um, and I think uh, what we could look to do here for an advance of two. Um, hmm, let me think. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll get down here beyond the river line. I think that's the... Uh, best thing to do uh, with our two advance uh, and the um, Stug Battalion. Well, you know, I mean, we could push it further here um, and maybe disrupt things. Um, maybe four to here. So we will have a Zoc bond here across uh, this hex here. Um, what we could do, though, is we could put it there and we'd have a sock bond around here, which may affect uh, any retreats going on there. Uh, yeah, we'll do that, I think, uh, with our advance. Um, yeah, okay. So that's that attack. So now we'll do this combat. So uh, this is the six to one. Um, there's, no, there's no shifts. So just uh, rolling the dice again. A one, not good. Uh, it is a six to one. It's a DRX. So uh, what that means is an exchange uh, with a defender retreat. Um, okay. So the exchange uh, on the Russian side is not particularly important because it's just one of the cavalry units. Uh, however, the exchange on the German side is the Soviets. Prerogative, so I suspect we might want to uh, flip this tank unit. Yes, okay, so we'll do that. Uh, and it is a DRX, uh, and DRX has uh, doo -doo -doo, um, that's a retreat two hexes, so um, that's going to be a problem. That's a Zoc bond, so the only hex it could go into is here, but then it cannot go further. Now, um, on the one, it has the possibility, uh, it's on the orange area, so let me check if it's possible to do a desperation defence here. So yes, it does qualify because it would be eliminated. Um, it neither either has, it, it would be in danger of elimination by retreat, or it's in a VP hex is the two criteria um, for the orange zone on the CRT. Uh, so it qualifies, um, and it is in the open. 
um, so it's in clear so it's not got a lot of chance of doing anything really um, if we look at the table here if I can just sneak it in here uh, modifiers are um, if the incident elite it's not if there's defensive support as in an artillery support unit has helped um, it's a minus one for that orange result uh, it's not low quality so we've got just a minus one on the dice and we're on the first column here clear desert so let's roll the dice let's see what we get six so it's actually pretty good minus one is a five and a five would you believe it is actually a success uh, so the treat is cancelled but it's a dash one result if I show you here a dash one result is well it means it takes a loss so that was probably pretty pointless uh, uh, a desperate defense there um, and yeah so that retreat has been stopped but the unit is eliminated now it may have seemed a bit pointless however it was a successful desperate defense and uh, what that means that that affects the advance so as it had a single step left and it lost um, it actually converts um, the uh, the advance to a limited advance and I believe the limited advance is just into the hex I'll just check that yes that's correct so all we can actually do is move into that hex which we will do with these uh, these units so um, pretty well done by those cavalry units there um, did uh, as good as they could possibly do a one combat and then a six on the on the desperation defense right anyway uh, moving across to here uh, we um, oh we did this one already didn't we uh, let's remove these counters out of the way so let's uh, move on to this combat here 36 uh, and uh, with our um, with our aircraft shift as well so it's five to one going to a six to one uh, so let's uh, roll the device uh, the dice on that we've got a four uh, a four on six to one is a dr4 advanced three so dr4 uh, that is um, uh, must retreat uh, four hexes in full retreat so the unit is not actually lost um, it's uh, it is able to retreat successfully um, but it will be uh, it will have a full retreat marker on it so let's look oh uh, that unit should be there um, uh, and um, yeah so full retreat here and I think probably the direction of makeup is is an idea um, and there's an advance four uh, yeah, uh, also there was no possibility of a uh, any de uh, de uh, determined defence there at, at all. Um, so we have our, our advance four here. So um, we could move this way. I think it's probably a good thing to do that. I think we will advance to with our mountain unit here uh, and then here we will go this direction so one two and there will be another combat here uh, so actually what should happen is um, uh, the breakthrough uh, group should move first um, before uh, the other also our um, our unit here the um, the air support unit is still available um, uh, to do the uh, to support in the combat. 
So here we have 6, 16, 16, 18, and 7, 25, 25 to 3. Um, so with the shift, we're uh, uh, easily into 7 to 1 territory. So we'll roll that combat. It's just rolled off it's a three you can see um, so a three on seven to one is another dr4 so again gets away um, and I think would retreat one two three back across to Armavir here uh, so uh, with a full retreat marker on it um, and then uh, we used one, uh, so we were there, we used one, two, or penalty one, two on the advance here, plus one for the attack, three. So we only have one advance left. Uh, so uh, possibly what we might want to do is just to shift down here, although we might break up here and possibly send a unit down this way. Uh, that might be very threatening. So, uh, yeah, let's do that. So, I think possibly sending... Yeah, send the unit that way instead. Um, that's our aircraft used properly now. Uh, and now we can advance with this unit um, here. So um, that's been quite successful. Finally, we've got the combat up here, up here, which is a straight four to one. And uh, I'm thinking, well, you know, it's a straight infantry attack. And if there are some losses, well, at least we're getting, uh, we're gonna be getting some replacements in um, primarily on the infantry side. So let's, let's go with it. So four to one, uh, no shift. A two. Uh, a 2 on a 4 to 1 is a DR2. So DR2 is uh, just the retreat. Two hexes and become disrupted. Um, so yeah, I suppose it would do that. Um, quite happily to, to run away if you like. Um, but that's done its job. And I think we will move to here. And uh, with that DR2... Um, advance two, so we have two advance, which is fine. Uh, we can go, I think, uh, this way, maybe that way, uh, just again to be quite threatening. Get forward as much as possible. Uh, right, um, I think that's all the combat phase done. So on the recovery phase, uh, we don't have anything. Um, and then we move to the supply phase. So in the supply phase, we would move railheads, but we get, don't get to do that yet. We don't get to start moving railheads until turn 13, next turn. Um, check our supply. So we just need to have, uh, again, our uh, five hexes to a road, um, going back to uh, a... Um, uh, to, to, to the supply swords, which is the, the map edge here. So uh, these guys can, of course, uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, oh, well, actually, to here, I think, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then back up the road. And our uh, remaining cavalry unit here can do the same um, back here, and then again going that direction. So we should be all right with supply. Um, any isolation attrition, so if there were any isolated units, we could conduct attrition. There's nothing on the German side, certainly, but nothing on the board yet at all. And then finally, we can flip HQs with SPs. So uh, we can remove the, we can flip this ASU, the first Panzer Army here, with that supply unit that came on this turn. So that's, oh, no, we can't actually, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it you cannot flip in that form. Uh, so uh, let me just get it right and and uh, and go through it. Uh, no, actually, that is fine. Uh, it doesn't have to be flipped over. So yeah, supply unit is removed, and uh, there we go. 
Um, great. So uh, that's our supply phase done. And uh, then we are going to be going on to the Soviet phase, and that will be the initial phase for the Soviets. Okay, so uh, the initial phase for the Russians, there are no AA units to ready. We do, however, have uh, some reinforcements. So we have one of these uh, Transcaucasus infantry, um, and we also have uh, a, a uh, small tank unit as well. Uh, interestingly enough, if you can see, that's actually got, uh, it's like a, a Lee um, silhouette on it. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an American lend lease tanks, it looks like, on this uh, 11th, uh, um, yeah, on the uh, 52nd Tank Brigade, I think it's supposed to be. Uh, so these can be placed. Uh, where shall we put them? Um, so, uh, again, which side of the map do we want them to come on? So, with the Transcaucasus, we're easy. Uh, with the tank unit, that has to come uh, across the Caspian Sea. So, um, just looking across here, we will have to place that reinforcement in this box here. And then, it will then be able to move in the movement phase to one of the entry boxes. Uh, coming back here for our Transcaucasus unit. Uh, I think we still need to bolt us some support up here. Uh, I think we probably need a little bit more help up towards the Taman area, so I think we'll place the reinforcement there. Uh, right, uh, use replacements. So we have uh, another infantry replacement for the, um, for the Russians, that's true. Uh, now, interestingly enough, I'm wondering, is it worth um, bumping up uh, a unit that already exists to uh, increase its uh, strength. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, so one idea is um, if we have any elite infantry units, now we can't use it on the, um, on the NKVD or the naval infantry, um, but uh, I'm just wondering uh, who we can use this on. Um, uh, let's see, it would be this one here, I think that's a good one, uh, I'm not sure we have any others, there's one here as well, which um, would be quite good as well, um, I'm thinking that guard unit actually, so I think we will put the replacement onto that guard unit. And what it does do is it means it's uh, it has some restrictions for the turn. So you can only move one hex, uh, which is fine, I think. Um, I think I'm sure the Germans are going to threaten too much. And we put this counter on here, uh, just to remind us, no combat and one hex. Uh, let's get it there so it can be seen. No combat and one hex movement maximum. We put that on the unit there, uh, and that's our replacement. Uh, using a resource point, so um, we're actually back to our fortifications here. So we can switch that fortification over to complete, and we can build another one. Now the Germans are getting rather close here, so I think if we want to uh, build it without interference, um, we're probably looking at over in this direction here. Uh, possibly in this hex here, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or possibly this one here. I might provide a bit of a block um, here. Better than that. Yeah, I think here. So in Krimskaya, we will place a... Uh, A fort being built there. Okay. Uh, right. So, um, and uh, that's our lot really for the initial phase. So we're on to our movement phase.
Okay, so that's the movement finished, and I've done a little bit of a tidy up. Uh, just one thing: during the uh, combat phase with the Germans, I did um, uh, did knock some of the pieces up here, and when I put them back, um, I didn't put them in the right place. I did actually uh, then, before this movement phase, put them in the right place and then move them. Uh, so there's only a couple a couple of bits and pieces here, uh, mainly uh, these guys up here. So. Um, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's all the movement done. There is no combat, of course. So we're on to the recovery phase. Uh, so we can... Uh, I've done a lot of full retreats here, which we can now flip to disrupts, just so we can get away from the uh, the, uh, the German uh, Zox without paying the penalties. Uh, so uh, let's flip those back and remove the disrupts. Uh, recovery phase, so then to supply phase, um, checking supply, um, we kind of have a problem with this chap here, I believe. Um, other than that, I think we're good to go. Um, uh, and uh, we may have to um, look at uh, isolation for him as, as well, but uh, let's, let's have a look. Right, he's actually fine because he can go through one uh, zone of control uh, on the overland portion of the trace. Uh, so uh, that's fine. Good. So um, that's our supply. Uh, we don't we haven't got any um, supply points to flip HQs with either. So that's pretty much our turn done. So I think slightly disappointed again with the Germans. And we've got a... Um, well, the worst result we could possibly get um, here with a DRX followed by a determined defence by a cavalry unit, uh, which had really sort of held held things up here. Um, but other than that, I think uh, you know the, the the Germans are charging forwards um, and uh, getting across this river line uh, is very useful as well. So uh, yeah, it's. Um, see how they go on uh, the third turn uh, that will be turn 13 august the 14th sorry uh third turn that'll be turn 12 that'll be august the 10th to the 13th so hopefully you'll join me then bye for now